tomorrow is the one year anniversary of the Bitcoin law here in El Salvador. And I'm gonna show you a headline from the National Review. And it reads, the verdict is in for El Salvador's Bitcoin experiment. It failed. According to Steve Hankey and Caleb Hoffman, El Salvador was a first mover in the adoption of Bitcoin. Its failures were both predictable and predicted. So they're saying the Bitcoin experiment has failed. For the rest of the episode, we're gonna show you what winning looks like. First, I'll start with a headline from Finland, okay? Well, kind of like the exact opposite of El Salvador, which is tropical. There, it's kind of Arctic and freezing, right? And it's really freezing <laughs> this winter because um, they're winning so hard, apparently. An update from Finland. Electricity suppliers are increasing their prices 10 to 12 fold for now. Small businesses are already collapsing and households and larger corporations are likely to follow in the coming months. Are you absolutely sure that we are winning? So when I saw that headline, and of course Europe is being told that they're winning as electricity prices soar, as supermarket prices soar, as well, just the overall standard of living collapses. They're told they are winning. So I thought, well, you know, as this deglobalization and de-dollarization hits and things look bad from a normal person's perspective, certainly as a Bitcoiner, it looks like it's pretty horrible to have your energy prices climbing by 10 to 12 times. Um, you know, then I realized, well, maybe, of course, if they think they're winning, it's quite obvious that they think El Salvador is losing. So the moment that they declared victory was February 26, 2022. History, history, 50 years from now, 100 years from now, will establish that was the moment that they lost when they stole Russia's reserves, $630 billion worth of reserves. Right now, they have declared it victory because we have this sort of online social media censorship and um, you know, only one viewpoint allowed, right? And anybody else who has a different viewpoint is either deplatformed or silenced in some way. They have been on a dollar system for the last 50 years. All trade is settled in dollars. The dollar SWIFT is run by the U.S. So we are, were on a dollar system. This is disintegrating. Um, well, Steve Hankey thought that was like the brilliant best times of El Salvador, where he says that in 2001, long before Bukele arrived on the scene, El Salvador phased out its domestic currency, the Colón, and introduced a dollarized competitive currency regime, one in which the dollar was legal tender, but any other currency could be used. Since then, the country has rediscovered economic stability. So he says that this dollar period since 2001 has been great for El Salvador, that despite then does not mention any of the exodus of the population. You know, when we look at charts, when we look at data, when we look at signals max, when we look at how um, electricity prices are moving parabolic, when we look at bond markets collapsing, when you look at the extreme moves, you start to think like something's wrong there, right? One of us is wrong. Either the data is wrong or our perception's wrong. Well, here, uh, the exodus of Salvadorans to America and elsewhere was a sign that in fact, what Steve Hankey said was a winning formula, was actually a losing formula. Right, well, with that U.S. dollar came the exportation of gangs into El Salvador, and you had the rise of gang violence. Uh, so I'm sorry, Steve Hankey, I believe, would think that that's a positive thing. Apparently he thinks that uh, all kinds of homicides happening on a daily basis is great, according to Steve Hankey, uh, and that uh, the fact that this is tide has turned on that is a, is a failure. Again, total uh, misunderstanding of how the English language works. A man is a woman now and a woman is a man now and a winner is a loser and a loser is a winner. Like they just decide out of the blue that the entire meaning, whatever language is in, is the opposite of what it used to be. And that is what George Orwell said was totalitarianism. That's a description of what totalitarianism is. Well, whenever you can get away with the decadence of uh, reinventing the meaning of words on the fly to suit a political agenda, it's because of those who control the money printing are totally uh, aut aut autocratically controlling the economy. So what we have in the United States and 
uh, other countries around the world where central banks are in power is uh, authoritarianism. So it's authoritarianism by the money printer. Here in El Salvador, it's the complete opposite. There's the rise of a meritocracy where there is no money printer. There's a Bitcoin that is legal tender, and people are left to their own devices to be entrepreneurially excellent and to come up with ways to improve their lives and their family lives. And the, uh, and the results are on the ground. You can see it. It's palpable. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time. They get your life. You are not even in a rat race. You're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1,000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1,000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1,000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1,000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave. You forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address, and I see you on the other side. Your Marco Stan.